Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let C be a real number, and suppose f is a function from a comma b to r, and it's given by f of x equals c for all real numbers x in a comma b. Then f is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and the integral from a to b of f is equal to c times b minus a. So really, we're dealing with the integral of a constant function. Now, let's first remind ourselves the definition of a partition of an integral. So let's consider our closed interval, a comma b. Well then, a partition of a comma b is a collection of non-overlapping closed intervals whose union is a comma b. So for example, this collection of closed intervals would be a partition of a comma b. And we could label these intervals i1, i2, and so on. We could label the endpoints x0, x1, x2, and so on. Now a tagged partition is when we select a point from each of these subintervals. And let's say that the points we select are these. Each of the points that we select are what we call tags. And we might label the tags t1, t2, and so on. And the way we can symbolize a tag partition is by a letter with a dot on top. And in the collection, it's a collection of ordered pairs. And the first coordinate of the ordered pair is the subinterval. The second coordinate is the tag in that subinterval. So this would be the tag partition represented up here. Now, the norm of a partition is the length of the longest subinterval in the partition. So in this case, the norm of this partition would be the length of I2. And the way we symbolize the norm of a partition is like this, with double vertical bars. Okay, so now let's talk about what a Riemann sum is. So let's consider some function defined on the closed interval a comma b. We'll say that the output values look something like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a bunch of rectangles, where the width of each rectangle is given by the length of each subinterval, and the height of each rectangle is given by the output value of this function at each of the tags. So the sum of the areas of each of these rectangles would be the Riemann sum of this function corresponding to this tagged partition. And the way that we can symbolize it is as follows. We can symbolize the Riemann sum for a function for any tagged partition like this. And f of ti represents the output value of the function at each of the tags. xi minus xi minus 1 represents the length of each of these subintervals. In general, a subinterval ii is given by xi minus 1 comma xi. Right? So this is, in general, what a Riemann sum would be for any tagged partition. Okay, so now let's talk about what it means for a function to be Riemann integrable on a comma b. Suppose f is a function from a comma b to r. We say f is Riemann integrable on a comma b if there exists a real number l, such that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every tagged partition p of a comma b, whose norm is less than delta, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus l is less than epsilon. Now, we have proven that if f is Riemann integrable on a comma b, then this value l that satisfies this statement is unique. 
And we denote this unique value L by the integral from A to B of F. We represent it this way. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now we're trying to prove that our function f defined by f of x equals c for all x in a comma b is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that the value of the integral is equal to c times b minus a. And so what that means is, by the definition, we're taking l to be c times b minus a. And we're essentially trying to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And it turns out our choice of delta will work for any real number. So let's just take delta to be one. And from here, we want to show for every tag partition P of A comma B, whose norm is less than delta, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus C times B minus A is less than epsilon. So to prove that, let's give ourselves an arbitrary tag partition of a comma b whose norm is less than delta. I'll call it p. And we can say that the subintervals of our partition are labeled as follows. We'll say that these are the subintervals and these are the tags in each of those subintervals. Now the whole goal is to show that the absolute value of the Riemann sum of f with this tag partition minus c times b minus a is less than epsilon. Now, the idea is, with f being a constant function, we can show that this Riemann sum itself is equal to c times b minus a. And to see how that happens, well, by definition of a Riemann sum, what do we have? the Riemann sum of f with this partition is equal to this by definition. But f is a constant function where every output value of f is equal to c. So the output value of all the tags through the function f are equal to c. So we can replace f of ti in this sum with c. And since c doesn't depend on i, we can pull c to the outside of the sum. But then, as you can imagine, this sum is a telescoping sum. We're going to be left with xn minus x0 when we add everything in this sum together. But x0 is actually equal to a, and xn is equal to b. And that shows that the Riemann sum itself is equal to c times b minus a. So now, we can show as the value of the Riemann sum minus c times b minus a is less than epsilon, because we know that the Riemann sum itself is equal to c times b minus a. So when we subtract these guys, we just get zero, and the absolute value of zero is equal to zero. And since epsilon is greater than zero, this is less than epsilon. So this shows that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus c times b minus a is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted. And so we have proven for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every tag partition, of a comma b whose norm is less than delta, we have that this is true. And that proves that our function f is Riemann integrable, and its integral is equal to c times b minus a. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.